Doctors have read it. What is the strangest thing a patient said they had that actually turned out to be true? My daughter had a fall on the trampoline when she was 3. She let out this really weird scream. Then went pale. Quiet and sweaty. And wouldn't let us touch her arm. We only live 5 minutes from the hospital so I put her in the car and drove there. She slept in the car. We get to the hospital and check in. And she's found her second wind. The Tridge nurse rolled her eyes at me when I asked for an x-ray. But ordered one anyway. At this point my daughter was literally pirouetting around the waiting room. I was starting to doubt myself. Even the x-ray technician was laughing at us. About 5 minutes after the x-ray is taken. A very red faced Tridge nurse runs out to the waiting room and firmly tells me to stop my daughter from dancing. She's broken her arm and they don't know if she will need surgery or not. She didn't need surgery in the end but spent 6 weeks in a plaster cast. It turns out she's bad as and has a great pain threshold. Love her. Patient here. This is a case where the doctor called bullshit on what I had. Broke my arm once. There was a huge waiting time at local hospital so I decided to go to another hospital the next morning. I slept really badly but managed to have like 3-4 hours of sleep. Instead of waiting the whole night awake in a waiting room. When I explained what happened to the doctor she said it was not broken because if it was I would never be able to sleep with it. So I get used to the idea I did not break my arm. I stay there for the scans, because it was swelled, and wait. The doctor came back with two pills of morphine saying I had incredible pain tolerance and that my arm broke at three places. She then explained I needed a surgery the same day and they are making place for it on the agenda. I can still remember her face when explaining to me the procedures of the surgery knowing she told me earlier it was not possible. Not a doctor. Friend's son age 2 came home from daycare said he had stuck an acorn up his nose. Mum looked. No acorn. Around two and a half boy develops chronic throat and sinus infections has 8 courses of antibiotics in a year. Age 4 boy is sent for tonsillectomy. Surgeon comes out of theater shows mum a moldy rotten acorn. Turns out he did put an acorn up his nose. They left tonsils in boy ridiculously healthy ever since. I had a bone replacement surgery, upper third of the tibia, and it was fixed in place to heal with a titanium plaque and screws. One day the plaque broke. And I went to the ER and told the doctor that I had a broken piece of titanium and he called it bullshit. His face after seeing the x-ray with the plaque separated in two pieces was priceless. How the FCK did the plate break? Because of the pressure. Some physics thing. Apparently the bone implant is weak and the titanium holds all the pressure from walking. And since bones are slightly elastic and the metal is not. The pressure makes it break. Jokes are on me though. As it has happened three times. With all the implications of having to go through surgeries and replacements and blah blah blah. In the last surgery I had removed six screws that were also torn apart. A patient walked in the clinic with a complaint of fever. I noticed his hands were very yellow. He did have a history of alcoholism but no other signs. I told him his hands suggest he is jaundiced and will need tests. He laughed and said oh no. I just dusted my hands with turmeric. Obligatory not a doctor. But a medical student. On my mental health placement there was a guy I saw on a home visit who was convinced his neighbor was trying to kill him. This guy had a history of mental health problems and the doctors were sure he was psychotic. And all of this was in his head. However. A few days later the doctor went round for another home visit and found his neighbor trying to climb through the window with an axe. The poor man wasn't psychotic at all. His neighbor was actually trying to murder him. And everyone thought he was just mad. My grandfather had schizophrenia and for years told us that someone was poisoning his water. We all ignored him until one day when one of my uncles tested his water and it turns out it was actually unsafe to drink. Everyone felt really bad for ignoring his complainants for years. However. It probably wasn't the Soviets who did it as he claimed. Inpatient psych ward when I was a medical student. We admitted a guy who was having psychotic delusions. He lived in a holler. A small valley between two mountains. For weeks. 
he had been absolutely preoccupied by this idea that the mountain was going to fall on his house. He would spend days at a time without sleep finding rocks, branches, and other junk and piling them up behind his house because the mountain's gonna fall down on my house. I guess this wasn't the first time this happened. Because the family brought him in saying he was off his meds. Working himself to death to build a pile of junk behind his house. He's admitted for a week or two. Goes to group therapy. Has his meds adjusted. And he's doing well. We decide he's being tuned up and ready to be discharged. His family comes to pick him up. But they have this grim look on their faces. We're bringing him back to the hotel. Yesterday there was a landslide. It destroyed the house. Double quote. Two stories. Both of which where I'm the patient. A. When I was 11. My brothers were bullying me so I rode away on my bike really fast. Went head over turkey over a log. And decided that to teach my brothers a lesson I'd go all in. So I cried and cried. When my mum got home she said my arm was probably broken and did all the first aid stuff. Rest ice compression elevation and put me in a triangle bandage. Go to doctors. With me thinking wow she's going to be super mad when she realizes nothing's wrong. Nope. It was fractured. Got a cast and everything. It never even hurt. So I guess it's a story of. I'm glad someone bought my bullshit story because despite lack of pain. I was the one who was wrong. B. Some people in my family have no immunity to chickenpox. I have had it 4 times. My brother 5 times. Vaccine doesn't work on us. But every time we tell someone. Whether it be a doctor or just a family member when explaining why I can't see their chickenpoxy nephew because I could get chickenpox again. Nobody believes me. One doctor didn't even believe me after he tested me. Just kept saying well this can't be right. I mean he was probably just surprised but I still didn't go back to that doctor. Not a doctor. But a patient. In January this year. The side of my face grew bigger and bigger. And I was in extreme pain. I go to my GP and tell him looks like mumps don't ya think? Comma. But he brushes it off saying I got my vaccines. He sends me to the ER. Because he does not know what I have and how to treat it. After 5 hours in the ER. They finally get my blood tested for the mumps. Turns out you can still have the mumps even though you're vaccinated. And this. Ladies and gentlemen. Is why the rest of us need to be immunized. Heed immunity. Guys. Edit. Heard. But leaving it up because it's pretty funny. Patient here. I broke the same rib 11 times over the course of 3 years. But the doctor often wouldn't even order an x-ray. She just said it wasn't healing right. Give it time. I tell her there's something else going on. She dismisses me. Finally. After the 11th time. She says fine we'll x-ray. X-ray shows a mass. Mass is biopsied. I have a tumor. The tumor was weakening the bone to the point that it broke when I reached into an upper cabinet for the sugar. Had that bad boy, named him Adam, removed in 2018. One week hospital stay. Worst surgery I can imagine. And now I'm doing great. Not a doctor but once had a patient claim to be a former member of a very famous sports team. Googled it and it was true. Poor guy was kind of unknown. He made the team and then quit to do various illnesses very soon after. Not a doctor. But a combat medic in the army. Had a private heat stroke on me and on his journeys back and forth between consciousness. He stated my butthole hurt. But feel really good too in a slurred outburst. I looked at him. Trying not to burst out laughing. Why yes private. There's a rectal thermometer in your no no square. My boyfriend took one of our cats to the vet recently for a suspected UT kidney issue and when the vet took her temperature rectally. In a room with a handful of interns. He says you're really not supposed to purr during this part. Nurse. I had a patient in her late 70s talk about how her mom was upstairs and died last night. I used to work neuro and so confused old people was our gig. So I just listened like hum. Ro. Okay. And did my job. I told another staff member about how she wouldn't stop talking about her mom being upstairs and dying last night. 
And they said it's true. Her 98 year old mom died in our IQ last night. I checked the roll in the Morgan low and behold. Her mom's name was on it. Well okay then. Reminds me of a patient of mine that came delirious but insisted his mother was alive. Patient was in his 70s. I thought it was part of the delirium but when he recovered it actually turned out his mother was in his 90s and still alive. My great grandmother outlived 9 of her 13 children which included all of her sons. Only 4 daughters lived longer than her. 3 still alive today although one's getting a bit dotty. My default assumption for any old man is they've got an even older mother still hanging around somewhere. Usually in better health than them. Not a doctor. My appendix had burst and I waited the next morning to go to the hospital. They dismissed me pretty much right away because I was laughing and joking around. After a couple HRS of waiting I had an ultrasound and the lady said she couldn't find my appendix so that couldn't be the issue. Makes sense right? Comma so she tried another type of ultrasound and found it dropped below my ovary before it burst so they quickly gowned me and started pumping pain meds into me. Then when they rushed to get the already. I was put on the gurney and was getting wheeled in. I was still happy and joking around because I was just ready to get it out and just nervous about it all. So the doctors double checked that I in fact had a burst appendix because I should have been in a lot more pain. Obligatory not a doctor but I remember when I was really young like 4 or 5 for whatever reason I put M and MS, just regular ones, up my nose because I don't know kids are fking idiots. Some of them got accidentally stuck because they were too far back. Well I was with my grandmother at the time and mentioned that they were stuck and she freaked and took me to the ER but by the time I actually got seen by a doctor I guess the chocolate had melted because of my body heat and the doctor didn't believe my grandmother because there was nothing obvious there but finally he agreed to use a swab to make sure and when he pulled the swab out it was covered in chocolate and my grandmother was vindicated. Paramedic here and not my patient but from another ambulance yesterday. It was a boy I think about 12 years old who believed broke his arm by throwing a ball because he heard something in his arm while throwing and then it hurt. However he just sat in the school's gym without a great deal of pain and jumped into the ambulance by himself. Even the trauma check was allegedly unsuspicious. They put his arm in a SAM splint and brought him to the accident clinic. The team of the ambulance later asked in the hospital if the arm was broken or not because they didn't really believe him. Turns out it was broken. I was an intern in the busiest ER in the U. S. And naive. Older man came in with belly pain. He said he had been drinking and messing around with some random woman and had passed out. He woke with belly pain and told me I bet she put something in there. I could feel a mass in the lower abdomen but doubted anyone could insert something into his rectum without waking even a drunk man. X-ray showed a coat hanger without the hook. One of those metal kind that is one long smooth arc and covered in padding and wrapped with silk or similar material. I say I was naive because I believed him when he said he didn't know. He clearly put it there. There was no woman. I have since removed dozens of things from people's backsides. That lie cost him several hours of work up and waiting. I think we all felt his belly and pushed on that thing. Not to be not a doctor one. But I was the patient. I was going on vacation when I felt a really sharp pain in my intestines. I didn't thought much of it. But I am a really paranoid person. So the next day. I started to get really worried when the pain only got stronger. I was 9 at the time and I was staying at my relative's house. So I called my mom and literally said I have appendicitis. She shrugged it off and said that I should get some rest. But I insisted that I should go to the doctor. She finally gave in and said okay. When we got to the doctor. He diagnosed me with appendicitis immediately. So after a long vacation of 11 hours. I went back and got my surgery. Not a doc. My mops was complaining that she thought my pops was losing his marbles. Not replying when spoken to. Etc. Made some doctor's appointments. Finally decided to check his hearing. By golly. An Asian beetle had crawled into his ear. Gotten all gunked up with earwax. Causing his hearing to decline. Pops is still alive and kicking. Even replying to her when he feels like it. Nurse here. So I was doing my night shifts in ER and it was fairly calm. 
A guy walked in holding his crotch and he had a lot of clothes around his waist. He asked for a male doctor. There was a female doctor on call and he refused to see her. I sent a male colleague to assess him. As soon as he was done with the assessment. He peeked from inside the curtain. Pale. Apparently his wife found out that this guy was cheating on her and cut across the shaft of his penis while he was getting into bed. Long story short. He was bleeding badly and had to take an in for emergency surgery. He survived. Not the marriage though. My mom used to work as a nurse in intercity Chicago. She told me a story that some guy came in saying he had injected shti into his leg. He wasn't lying. He literally injected liquid shti into his leg to get himself sick. A second story is that a homeless lady came in for some reason that I don't remember. When they were giving her a bath. Some white and soggy lump was found in the tub. The lady said oh. That's my fry. She had been stuffing them into her vagina to store to eat later. My husband was previously diagnosed by another doctor but when we moved to another state his new practitioner didn't believe him that the veins in one of his scrotum were knotted during the first appointment. My husband explained in detail all the studies, tests and treatment plan he's done. Even signed the release form to get records. Husband shows a practitioner what he's taking and asks for refills and referrals. The practitioner says he'll do everything request but fill the Norco script because he wants to review the records first once he gets them. My husband has explained the pain to me that it is like getting kicked in the balls all the time with worse flare ups. He's understandably frustrated that he's out of the one medication that helps and can't get a refill. The husband tells the practitioner to feel my balls. You can feel the knotted veins pulls down his pants and whips out his junk. The practitioner agrees and pales when he feels the knot. Prescription written same day. Records were received a few weeks later. Sorry. Another one from me. When my son was 3 he became unwell over the space of a week. Tired. Drinking more. Bedwetting. Challenging behavior. I took him to the GP and said that I was worried it could be a UT. Or type 1 diabetes. I knew they would want a urine sample but the only bottle I had at home was a small coke bottle. I washed it thoroughly and he weed in it. When we got to the doctors. It came up with massive amount of sugar in his wee. The GP sanctimoniously lectured me about how I should have used a proper sample bottle. He gave me a sterile one and I took my son to the toilet. He was able to wee on demand at that point. As he was drinking so much. Shock horror. There was a massive amount of sugar in it again. GP mumbled in apology. And after a stay in hospital. Our journey with type 1 diabetes in a 3 year old began. I'm not a doctor. Not even the patient in this story. But the co-worker of the patient. A few years ago. My co-worker wasn't feeling well. Just general achy malaise and he had red splotches on his face. So he was telling me and another co-worker that he had a doctor apt. At lunch. Cause yesterday he just didn't feel good when he got home from work. As I described. Comma suddenly. Out of nowhere. I asked him if he'd ever had the chicken pox. The red splotches didn't look like classic pimple like red spots. But I'd been reading a book and one of the characters had it. And it just popped out of my mouth. He said he didn't think he'd had it as a kid. Lunch rolls around. He goes to his apt. And I get a phone call about 40 minutes later. The co-worker is sitting in the exam room. Doctor had just examined him and said he had something. But he wasn't sure what. So co-worker mentions what I said about the chicken box. Doctor looks at him and says. That must be one very smart lady. Because that's exactly what you have. So that was my first and only diagnosis. And only because of a character in my book. Patient here. I was at a festival a couple months ago when I got knocked about in a mosh and went down hard before someone yanked me out. I went to the med tent three different times because something in my knee didn't feel right. And every single time was turned away and told I just had a bruised knee and that all they could do was give me ibuprofen and an ace bandage. After about 6 hours of walking on it, and having it collapse out on me repeatedly, I finally called it and went home. I convinced a mate to drive me to ED the next morning. Free hospo visit because my country isn't stupid, and walked in by myself. 
Sat there for a couple hours before I could see someone and then when I did I had to push to get an x-ray and an MRI saying I thought I'd torn my ACL. Doc told me I won't even been able to walk from the car into ED let alone the 6 hours the day before. Results come in and turns out I've done the terrible triad. ACL. MCL and PCL. So that major surgery and a 6-9 month recovery time. So yeah. FCKUED Doc and Ambo Volunteers. Occupational therapist here. I was gathering a social history on an elderly patient. Asked who she lives with. She told me she lives with her 6 dogs. And 200. 000 bees. I was like. Yup this lady has post operative delirium. Called her son to get the real social history. He was like. Yeah she's a beekeeper and she adopts old dogs. I was the patient in this situation. In 7th grade I was riding scooters with my little brother and I fell off when I hit a pothole. Fuck Michigan. And when I fell I put my arms out in front me. I felt the worst pain in my right arm right from my funny bone. I have never screamed so loud and I still had to walk home. My brother was freaked out and I kept telling him I broke my funny bone. I broke my funny bone we finally get home and I tell my mom the same thing. She's a nurse BTW. She didn't believe me and didn't even check my arm. I sat on our sofa for about 4 hours crying and saying I was in pain before she took me to the doctor. They took an x-ray and sure enough I broke my ulna. My mom never even said sorry for not believing me and I had to wear a cast and everything. Plus I had to go through months of well it wasn't very funny with it. Patient complained of movement and itching in lower left edentulous mandible. While in my chair he reached up and scratched a hole through his jingither and was bleeding profusely trying to get to them and show me the wriggling things. I'm sad to say that I suggested a psych evaluation. But to be fair I did refer to oral surgeon just in case. Even made a personal phone call to ensure warm handoff and rapid response. Dot. They uncovered some kind of parasitic insects. He healed. And I listen to patients no matter how bizarre sounding. They feel something. I tore the ligaments in my knee when I was 12 and the doctor had a difficult time getting the stitches out. One broke and he decided to leave it under my skin telling my parents it would dissolve. When I was 16 I banged my knee against something and out popped the end of the stitch. I went to the doctor to get it removed. You could see a long curly blue thing under my skin. I insisted this was the remaining stitches. My doctor just thought it was a vein. She froze a small area around the protruding stitch and pulled on it. She pulled out 2 or 3 inches of curly stitching. She held it up. Looking shocked and said. I have to go show the other doctors this and left the room. Had a larger patient complaining of abdominal wall pain ever since they were head butted by a goat. CT scans never identified anything. On a whim got an ultrasound and saw this little cyst thing the size of a pea right where they were hurting. Told them no guarantees but I'd be willing to cut it out to see if it helps. Ended up cutting out an ellipse of tissue where the cyst thing was and all their pain was gone. I was the patient in this scenario but my boyfriend came home to find me unconscious and covered in vomit. The only words I could get out were I've had a stroke on repeat. Doctors dismissed it for nearly 48 hours before someone with common sense gave me a scan and I had a bleed on both sides of my brain. Wasn't believed because I was 22 and looked fine. I dislocated my knee for the second time when I was about 18 simply sliding into a booth at a bar. Screamed at the sudden pain. And one of my friends called an ambulance. Only problem was that it had popped back in by the time the ambulance got there. They decided that I couldn't possibly have dislocated it. Fast forward about 9 years. When, after many more dislocations of my knees, shoulders and wrists and finally a cancer scare because my boobs suddenly changed shape they discovered that my ligaments just weren't holding me together properly. It was my physiotherapist that advised I ask to be referred for an Ehlers Danlis diagnosis. And when I asked, I was told you can't possibly have that. Your skin springs back straight away. I insisted and about 6 months later I was finally referred to a rheumatologist. Spoiler alert. I have Elhus Danlis.